The last example in this section is example five. Okay, it's different from the ones we've done previously in this section. Okay, I want you to imagine that this question were on an exam. I want to know how you would answer it or how you would approach it. Okay, so I know that I'm talking to you over a video, but think in your mind once we read through it, how would you do this? Okay. So example five says graph the quadratic function f of x is equal to x minus three quantity squared minus 10. Okay, so take a minute and think about what you would do here. Okay, well, there's a couple of things you can do. Okay, first of all, you see something squared. So if you were to multiply it out, um, it, you would see more clearly that this is a quadratic function, okay? Um, now keep in mind the way it's written, you cannot say, oh, the C value is negative 10 because it's the number, or A is one because it's the number in front of X. You cannot make those identifications unless your quadratic function is in the format Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. So you cannot identify the A, the B, or the C until you multiply this thing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I need to FOIL out or box the X minus three squared. So let me go ahead and do that. So X minus three times X minus three, since you're squaring it. Okay, we're gonna get X times X is X squared. X times negative three is negative three X. Negative three times X is negative three X. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. So we're gonna get y equals, we had x minus three squared minus 10. Okay, when we boxed out the x minus three squared, we got x squared minus three x minus three x plus nine, but don't forget to tack on the minus 10. Okay, so if we combine like terms and we can combine the, the two negative three X's, we're gonna get X squared minus six X. We can also combine the numbers. Nine minus 10 is negative one. Okay, so now that it's in that format, Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, you can see A is the number in front of X, it's one. B is the number in front of or sorry, A is the number in front of X squared, that's one. B is the number in front of X, that's negative six. C is the constant, which is negative one, okay? So you cannot, cannot make those identifications until um, you, you know, multiply everything out and then go from there, okay? So once you have the A, B, and C, you would do what we did, um, you know, in the, examples one through four. Okay, you'd have to go through the work and you'd have to compute the vertex and then you could get the x-intercepts and then you could get the y-intercept and look at the axis of symmetry and you can do all of that. That's a really involved process, okay? Um, in examples one through four, we had to go through it because that was our only option, okay? But there's something different about this particular quadratic equation, okay? it wasn't multiplied out for us, okay? And because of that, it's actually in a form where we can recognize transformations, okay? So if I go back up here, okay, and I'm thinking about this now in terms of transformations, okay? It is something squared, okay? So your parent function is going to be x squared, okay? So then you've got two things going on. You've got parentheses and you're subtracting inside parentheses and then outside of parentheses, you are subtracting 10. Okay, so let's do each of those guys. Let's handle them separately. Order of operations says we would handle the parentheses first. So since you have x minus three inside the parentheses, okay? Uh, inside parentheses, that is a horizontal shift, so you're either going left or right. Since we are subtracting inside the parentheses, that means you need to take every point on x squared and shift it right three, 
okay? Write three units, okay? So that's the first transformation. The other one comes from the minus 10, okay? You're subtracting outside of parentheses, so that means it is a vertical shift either up or down. Since you're subtracting, we're going down 10 units, okay? So this is probably a lot less work than having to go through and do the vertex and the intercepts and axis of symmetry and all of that, okay? So let's see how quickly we can graph this thing, okay? I am gonna go over here and I'm gonna first put down the parent function of x squared. So remember, you needed to memorize that graph and know key points on it. It goes through the origin, one, one, two, four, three, nine, and then on this side, negative one, one, negative two, four, negative three, nine. Okay, so this is the parent function. And then each of these key points, okay, we know how to move it around, okay? We need to take each point and go right three down 10, okay? So here we go. Let's take the origin. That's the vertex here. We're going to go right one, two, three, and then down 10, okay? So the vertex has moved to three, negative 10, okay? And then I'll take the points over here, the point at one, one. I'm going to go right three down 10. Okay, so it's going to end up here at 4, negative 9. Okay, if I take the point at 2, 4, I go uh, to the right 3 and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so that's the point 5, negative 6. Okay, I could even trans transform this guy. Le or sorry, right 3, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, 10, okay? So that's six, negative one, okay? And then you could move the three points on this side of the parabola, okay? Uh, let's see if we can fill that in, okay? So if you did that and you counted them out, okay, those three points would move as well. You could also just use symmetry to get those points on the left side, okay? But here you go. This is what your graph is gonna look like. Okay, so if you had done it the transformation way, it saves you a lot of work, okay, um, because you don't have to multiply it out. You don't have to get the vertex or any of the intercepts, okay? You just, boom, write down your parent function and then do apply all the transformations, okay? Remember, this is most of the time when you're working with quadratic functions and you're trying to graph one, this is not gonna be possible, okay? It's very rare that your quadratic function will be given to you in a format where you can actually recognize transformations, okay? So then you have to go through the process of multiplying everything out if you need to, and then doing the A, B, and C, and then figuring out the vertex and the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts and going from there, okay? But if transformations are, uh, if you do, if your function is given to you in a format with transformations, by all means do it that way, it's a lot easier. Okay, so that's the end of this section. Um, in the next section, 4.5, we will look more at the quadratic inequalities. And remember, at the bottom of this page, there is the quadratic formula if you need it.